हेलो एवरी वन वेलकम टू दिस सीरीज ऑफ इंजीनियरिंग इकोनॉमी लेक्चर्स इन दिस लेक्चर वी विल बी डिस्कसिंग अबाउट ब्रेक एवन एनालिसिस पर्टिकुलरली अबाउट द थियोरिटिकल आस्पेक्ट ऑफ ब्रेक एवन एनालिसिस वी विल सी हाउ वॉट इज द इम्पोर्टेंस ऑफ ब्रेक एवन एनालिसिस एंड इट इज वन ऑफ द टूल्स विच इज यूज फॉर डिसीजन मेकिंग सो द ब्रेक एवन एनालिसिस इफ यू गो बाय द डेफिनेशन ब्रेक इज अ मेथड that is used by most of the organizations to determine the relationship between cost revenue and their profits at different levels of output what it means that whenever we are generating uh, some output out of this output we are generating some profit so keeping in view the profit margin we have to decide upon how much revenue must be collected by selling this item in an open market so a relationship which basically takes into account all these things that is nothing but that is what we call as break even analysis we can also say that a break even analysis is used to determine how much sales volume is uh, is required for a business to start making a profit so that is another definition by which we can define break even analysis that means what minimum quantities one must produce so that the business starts making a profit third point it helps in determining the point of production at which the revenue equals the cost so this is the most important thing as far as the break even analysis is concerned that is revenue equals the cost or simply we can say that the total cost is nothing but this is equal to total revenue at break even point and this is under this condition the amount of production is known as an optimum production at which we are making at least no losses so break even analysis is also called as profit contribution analysis the break even point is the point at which the cost or expenses and revenues both are equal or simply we can say that this is a condition at which we don't have any gain or loss and the importance of break even analysis is that it helps in deciding upon the pricing strategy either as a marketing plan or a business plan so that is the most important thing that why we need a break even analysis and just to remember again this is a condition of break even point where the total cost is equal to total revenue let us see this on a diagram if you recall what we have discussed in our earlier earlier classes we do have two type of cost one is the fixed cost and another is variable cost all these cost we'll see in the, in our next slides we are having two things one is the total cost line and the total revenue line so if we just focus on the total cost line this is the total cost line which is nothing but it will be an algebraic sum of variable cost and the fixed cost and this is the total revenue if we focus on these two lines there is a point of intersection between the total revenue line and the total cost line so this point of intersection is nothing but is a point where we don't have any profit and loss if we move below this point this is a region where we are having a loss because the total cost line is above the total revenue line and if we see beyond this point the total revenue line uh, revenue function is on the higher side as compared to the total cost line so we are having a region where we are having a profit so this is a this point is critical because every business strives to operate at least on this point that is that is the condition where we don't have any profit and loss of course we try to operate our business above this point in order to make profits so this is again the same thing so this is what we call as a break even point so region below this the shown in red is basically representing the loss region and the region shaded by blue is depicting the profit region and where these two regions they intersect at a point and this point is known as the break even point so break even point it can either be expressed in terms of the sales if we just drop a line on the y axis perpendicular line to the y axis so it may be represented in the form of sales or it may be represented in the form of 
volume or quantities sold. So in both ways we can depict this break even point. So before uh, going into the calculations of break even point let us re let us again revisit the different types of cost. So in our earlier earlier classes we have seen that we have two kind of two types of cost one is the variable cost and another one is fixed cost and the basic difference between the two is that the variable cost they depends upon the volume of production higher the production more will be the variable cost so variable cost are cost that changes with changes in the production level for example cost of material it means producing five quantities will require less amount of material as compared to producing 10 quantities so anything which depends upon the volume of production that will be turned as or that will fall under the category of variable cost and those costs which remain fixed regardless of output or sales that types of cost will be turned as fixed cost say for example if we have set up a plant so whether we are making 10 units or 20 units the infrastructure required that we have already built that is that falls under the category of fixed cost it is irrespective whether we are operating our plant at 50 percent capacity or at 90 percent capacity whatever incurred in building up that plant that will be covered under fixed cost so these are the two types of cost then unit price is the amount of money that is being charged from uh, by the customer when each of the each each unit or a product is being sold in an open market so that is the price at which we are purchasing a product any product from the open market total cost we have seen the total cost is the sum of the fixed cost and the variable cost so in the if we again see this on the uh, on this diagram the total cost is basically it is it will be a sum of variable cost this variable cost as the volume increases you see the the variable cost increases however the fixed cost remains constant over a over a over this fixed cost remains constant or irrespective of the amount of quantities produced at any point if we just sum the fixed cost and the variable cost that will give us the value of total cost so total cost it is sum of the two and total variable cost it we can express this variable cost in term mathematically we can express it, it as the expected sales multiplied by the unit variable cost that what what we are selling in an open market multiplied by, by the price of that unit that will give us the total variable cost or the amount or the units produced multiplied by the variable unit cost so that will give us a value of total variable cost total revenue is what we are generating by selling any product in an open market so number of units sold multiplied by its selling price or unit price is basically the total revenue being generated of course profit and loss all of us are familiar with this the monetary gain or loss resulting from revenues after subtracting all the associated cost that means whatever revenue is being generated if we subtract the total cost from this revenue either we get a positive term or a negative term so if it is positive we are having profit if it is in negative then we are having loss so that is the different types of cost which we will be using in our presentation when we are driving the 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 form the the deriving the relationship between the break even quantities and the different types of costs so let us see how we how we compute this break even quantities so before uh, going into the method let's see some of the assumptions so the first assumption is that all elements of cost that is production administration and selling distribution all these can be divided into two categories one is the fixed cost and another one is the variable cost or it can be divided into two components fixed and variable variable costs remain constant per unit of output okay so whatever is being incurred in producing that we say for example the material so it remains constant per unit throughout the production okay 
fixed cost remain constant at all volumes of output so it is independent whether we are producing 5 units 10 units or 100 units so this cost is fixed over a volume of production selling price per unit remains unchanged or constant at all levels of output and every time we are purchasing a product from a market it will be available at the same price at all time instants volume of production is the only factor that influence cost so this is again an assumption that it's only the volume of production that in or it's only the factor that influences cost there will be no change in the general price level the price level will be fixed and if there is one product and in case of uh, there is only one product and in case of multi product the sales remain constant so this is again an assumption but we are not taken into account the multiple products at this point of time okay so let's see the very simple calculation for this if p is the uh, sale price uh, per unit v is the variable cost per unit so this is the nomenclature and q is the number of units sold or manufactured and say fc is the fixed cost so what we have seen that at break even point the total revenue is equal to the total cost so if q are the number of units sold or manufactured the total revenue can be computed by multiplying this q with the sale price per unit so it will be q into p is not and as far as the total cost are concerned it will have two components one is the fixed cost and another one is the variable cost so fixed cost is denoted by fc uh, when it comes to variable cost say if small v is the variable cost per item or per unit so it will be again for product for producing q units the variable cost will be v into q so if we just rearrange this so we can see that the quantity is q it it may be computed as fc over p minus v or we can say that this q represent the quantities to be produced to attain a break even point it is the fixed cost divided by p minus v that is the price say selling price per unit minus the variable cost associated with production sometimes the quantity p minus v is of interest and this is called as unit contribution margin c so p minus v is sometimes also known as unit contribution market okay so this is all about the theoretical aspect of break even analysis in the next lecture we will see how we can manipulate the break even point